Do you like keeping fit? Do you like eating healthy? Do you like going to the gym? Well, I've got some bad news for you. You're a nasty. All right, mate, it's Madigan recorded live from the world's most beautiful open air prison. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. You can find me just by searching at the Brian Madigan on any of those platforms. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a five star review, especially if you're listening along to the audio only versions of these podcasts on Apple or Spotify. Just when I thought the corporate media couldn't get any more ridiculous, they go and outdo themselves again and again and again. This one caught my eye and I honestly haven't stopped laughing about it ever since I saw it. Uh, from MSNBC, so this tweet was sent out on the 10th of Feb, so, you know, it's been out a while, but the far right's obsession with fitness is going digital. Opinion, why the far right is really into home fitness. <laughs> oh, man, I, ha I, I just had to read it then. Uh, so please laugh along with me. It appears the far right has taken advantage of pandemic at home fitness trends. Oh, by the way, before I continue, notice here that this was actually published on March 22nd of 2022. So what happened was they released it. They got absolutely ratioed to the, to you know what, and then they sort of cowered back in their, in their house and then they released it again on February 10th this year. So nearly a full year has gone by and they thought, oh, we'll, we'll see if we can, uh, we'll see if we can scare people again into thinking that, you know, if you uh, exercise and eat right, then you're, then you're a far right extremist. <laughs> Sorry, I'll continue. It appears the far right has taken advantage of pandemic at home fitness trends to expand its decade plus radicalization of physical mixed martial arts, MMA and combat sports spaces. Earlier this month, researchers reported that a network of online fascist fitness chat groups on the encrypted platform Telegram recruiting and radicalizing young men with neo-Nazi and white supremacist extremist ideology initially lured with health tips and strategies for positive physical changes. New recruits are later invited to closed chat groups where far-right content is shared. Physical fitness has always been central to the far right. In Mein Kampf, Hitler fixated on boxing and jiu-jitsu, believing they could help him create an army of millions whose aggressive spirit and impeccably trained bodies combined with fanatical love of the fatherland would do more for the German nation than any mediocre tactical weapons training. <laughs> So what a jump they've made there. You like to, you know, you like to work out? Well, bad luck. That means you're no better than Hitler. <laughs> oh, man, I find this so funny. I don't know why. It's just hilarious. You know, when you jump on Instagram and you see all those fitness thoughts going around doing their thing in their tiny little outfits? Yeah, secretly they're Nazis. <laughs> Oh, man. In more modern times, far-right groups have launched mixed martial arts and boxing gyms in Ukraine. Oh, speaking of Ukraine, uh, the, the, uh, the country that you guys uh, happen to love so much and support so much, um, you might want to look into the Azov Battalion that's over there. Yeah, they've got some beliefs. Yeah, but keep sending them billions and billions of dollars. Oh, no, no, no. We've got to focus on people who go to the gym. Uh, boxing gyms in UK, Canada and France, among other places, focus on training far-right nationalists in violent hand-to-hand -hand combat and street fighting techniques. It's caught the attention of intelligence authorities, especially in Europe, where various reports have noted the role of combat sports and MMA in radicalising and promoting far-right violence, a series of combative efforts between governments, na national sports associations and local gyms in places such as Germany, Poland and the United Kingdom have introduced uh, intervention and prevention programs. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, jeez. That sounds horrible. Anyway, they, they, they tend to uh, blather on here a little bit. The intersection of extremism and fitness leans into shared obsession with the male body, training masculinity, testosterone, strength and competition. Physical fitness training, especially in combat sport, appeals to the far right for many reasons. Far right, uh, sorry, fighters are trained to accept significant physical pain, to be warriors and to embrace messaging around solidarity, heroism and brotherhood. Yeah, so there we go. 
Um, and if you're just a soy, you know, they're basically sitting there going, if you don't take care of yourself, then you're just a beta cuck. It's championed as a tool to help fight the coming race war and the street battles that will precede it. Recruits are encouraged to link individual moral virtues such as willpower, de- decisiveness and courage with, a, with desired collective traits such as virility and manliness. This also works in the reverse, with white supremacists encouraging potential recruits or activists to stay in good physical shape as a way to managing self-presentation to the public. The neo-Nazi blogger Andrew, uh, what's his name, Andrew Anglin, Anglin uh, advised that his follow, uh, followers that fat people should be required to commit. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, fat people should be required to commit to losing weight if they are to stay involved in groups in person gatherings, noting that continued obesity should not be tolerated. Man, then that means there's a uh, there's a lot of doctors out there who share share that um, belief. Are you saying that they're all neo-Nazis and white supremacists? Who is this lunatic? Cynthia Miller Idris. Oh, God. Uh, With recruitment now moving uh, from physical gyms to chat rooms, live stream fights, tournaments, festivals, and even combat sports, video games, we're seeing extremist fighting culture being combined with an uh, entertainment culture that really uh, valorizes violence and hyper-masculinity. Fitness, of course, is a staple of a hobby for many people for whom it's enjoyable and rewarding for brain health and overall well-being. Physical fitness channels dopamine, adrenaline, and serotonin. Well, too bad. You're all far right now. (laughs) To feeling good. Intertwining those feelings with hateful and dehumanizing ideas while promoting the concept that physical warriors are needed to create the strength and dominance to defend one... One's people from a perceived enemy makes uh, for a dangerous and powerful cocktail of radicalization. For those of us working to find better pathways to reach at-risk youth, understanding the ways that the far-right groups recruit and socialize youth in the ways that go well beyond rhetoric and ideas is crucial. It's critical that leaders, including parents, physical trainers, gym owners, coaches, and other fitness and others in the fitness world, understand how online growing and recruitment uh, can I- I- intersect with spaces. Uh, we generally think as promoting health and well-being. The realm of online fitness now provides a new and ever-expanding market for reaching and radicalizing young men, and it requires our targeted focus and resources to try and stop the cycle. Notice uh, that uh, young Cynthia there never gave any sort of example of what this was other than one guy saying that, you know, fat people shouldn't be fat. And like I said... That's a, um, that's a commonly shared opinion by many in the health industry, Cynthia. So does that make them far right? Does that make them white supremacists? Does that make them uh, Nazi sympathizers? No, see, here's what the overall goal is. They hate the fact that men are taking care of themselves and trying to better themselves. Because when you have a grossly overweight, unhealthy, sick population, it's easier to control them. And seeing men starting to really start to take care of themselves, that's frightening to those in power. Because they're harder to control when they're hyper-masculinized. Did I say that right? I don't know. That's why they went so hard after um, Jordan Peterson. Because he saw that men were suffering and men aren't doing well. And he told them, you know, you can't be blaming women. You can't be blaming everyone else. No, the, 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 the sole person to blame is yourself. Get up, lift something heavy, do something. And they just, they tore into him. They had to destroy his message. And that led to the rise of people like Andrew Tate. Now, I'm not saying that you should be like Andrew Tate because I don't agree with everything that Andrew Tate says. And until he gets charged with something, until some actual evidence come out, I'm not going to uh, sit there and say he's innocent or guilty because I don't know. If he is guilty, then hopefully he gets everything coming to him. If he's not guilty, man, well done. You've just created an even bigger monster. A monster that you created with this rubbish telling people that if they go out there and exercise, then they are, ooh, far right. God, it's so ridiculous. And when I saw saw far right and then immediately something else pops up, 
which um, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but it, it, it just caught my eye and it made me laugh. Why the word freedom is such a useful rallying cry for protesters. The word has come has become common among far-right groups, experts say. Oh, yeah, the experts. This from the CBC. That's like uh, the equivalent to the ABC here in Australia, I'm pretty sure, and the BBC in the UK. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, any of my Canadian brothers and sisters watching. Uh, I don't know um, too much about that when it comes to the CBC. Uh, As demonstrations against COVID-19 restrictions continue across Canada. Oh, this was um, from last year, by the way. The word freedom uh, on the lips of placards. uh, The word freedom is on the lips and placards of many protesters. Um, So basically, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go into reading the entire thing because they, they basically do exactly the same thing that the fitness one did, saying that if you like the idea of freedom, then therefore you're, you're far right. Which is further pushing the narrative of just, be compliant, be a fat, couch-ridden, gross blob, live in the pod, eat the bugs, don't think for yourself, do as you're told. But the good thing is, is the people are pushing back on this because they can see how ridiculous these people are because they love to use these umbrella terms, far right. Far right, white supremacy. They throw it on everything. Maths is white supremacy, according to these lunatics. Maths. So if you like maths and you're good at it, well, I got got some bad news for you. Then Then you're a white supremacist. If you keep a schedule and are on time and don't like to be late, Well, that's white supremacy. (laughs) If you like to work out, keep fit and healthy, that's white supremacy. If you don't like having the government intrude on every single facet of your life, well, then you're far right. You can't get much more ridiculous than this. Well, I mean, the, the, the propaganda that they're pushing out to try and quell the resistance against this overarching, uh, overreaching government. It, it, it's amazing to me. I hope this made you laugh as well because I, I don't know why, but it just made me laugh so much. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, leave a comment, leave a five-star review. Oh, man, are we done? Yeah, we're done. Yeah.